This is Julie Pearson Little Thunder for the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at Oklahoma State University. And I'm interviewing Thelma McCarty from the Chilago class of 55. Thelma, you're a Ponca tribal citizen, um, live close by here, I guess, in Ponca City, and um, an alumnus of Chilago. And I look forward to hearing about your memories of the school and a little bit about what you did after you left the school. So All thank right. you for talking with me. Okay. Where were you born and where did you grow up? I was born in Pawnee and grew up in Hominy. Okay. And that's interesting since you're Ponca. So can you talk a little bit about what your folks did? I can tell you about it, <laughs> yes. Uh, my mom is a non was non-Indian, non and my dad, the Ponca, went, my mom lived in Harmony. She worked for uh, Osages, and my dad was down from Ponk City, and he also worked for Osages. He was a chauffeur, and my mom, uh, like, maybe cooked or, you know, just helped out. Right. And uh, that's how they met. That's how they met. Neat that's story. where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> how about um, schools? What was your experience like? I guess you went to Harmony, public school for a while. Harmony, Harmony. public school. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, what was it like? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, did you want me to s start with the first grade or? Sure. Yeah. Okay, my you dad. Uh, memories. My I uh, went to the first grade in Quapaw. Oh, okay. Oklahoma, yeah, and uh, my dad went to work in the. Uh, there's some kind of mines up there. Okay, in the second grade, then they moved to Commerce, Oklahoma, and uh, so I went there. Third grade, we moved back to Harmony. <laughs> so wow. I went there until I left to go to Schlock. To go to Schlock. Mm -hmm. A lot of moving around, though, the first it couple really years. It really was, uh huh. How was it? it? Was. Was, what was that like adjusting? Well, you, you really want me to tell you? <laughs> okay, in the first grade, uh, I don't ever remember, remember being told, well, you're going to go to school. You know, I don't, know, don't ever remember that. So all of a sudden, one day, Mama said, well, you're going to school. So she takes me. We live like a block and a half, I remember, from the school there, grade school. She took me there, and school had already started. The kids were already in the room. And so there, uh, there I was, and I didn't know what was really going on. And so uh, the teacher was so sweet. Her name was Mrs. McGriffin. I still remember her name. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, but I was hanging on to my mama all this time. Oh yeah. And and I mean literally, that's what I would do: hang on to her blouse, dress, whatever. And so then uh, she, they both started talking really good to me, like you know, yeah, you're going, you know. And I said, oh, mama, you know. And, okay. Then all of a sudden, the teacher, Mrs. McGriffin said, oh, looky, we're going to show, you know, do this or that. I turn around, my mama's gone. And I burst into tears. Well, I mean, you know, that was very traumatic. Yeah. So that was my first grade. Second grade was, you know, better because I was used to, oh, by the way, in the first grade, every time, like at recess, a lot of times, I would just look down a block and a half and see our apartment building. And... Uh, I remember leaving recess, and then I got out the fence, and I thought, oh, I forgot my scarf. So I went back in the classroom, got my scarf, and took went off and home. went home. And then when I got close enough that I thought my mom could see me, I went, oh. you know, ain't that awful? <laughs> I mean, it's... You didn't really want to be those are. <laughs> yeah, I wanted her to think I was sick. I played sick a lot that year. <laughs> oh, that's awful. <laughs> and, and how many, what, what was it like spending, you spent a few years in Hominy before Shalako? Well, uh, from third grade till uh, after my freshman year, okay. I was in Hominy. And uh, do I really tell you how it Really well. I mean, feel like it. Um, yeah, I um, mean, think. 
I felt inferior, I will tell you, because we were Tonka, and uh, there were uh, pretty well-to-do Osage kids there. And uh, one thing that I really loved, though, was I was uh, in the band. I always loved music. You know, my mama would play big band sound. You know, I always had the radio on. But I loved music. And uh, in the sixth grade, I started playing the snare drum. That and was he, unusual, I think. Yes, and you know, uh, he his name was Mr. Martin, the band director. And he put me in high school marching band in the sixth grade. Uh huh. And so, of course, I played the drum all the way through, you know, till I graduated from Shilako. I uh, had many... Uh, contests, you know, that we'd go to. I remember oh, winning several at Pawnee. You know, they'd have the, some big deal there. But Pawnee Bill's marching, I mean, uh, whatever you call it. Anyways, uh, so you want to know when uh, I went to Schlock? Yes, or what and what, like? what motivated okay. that move? I will say that uh, I did not... I did not uh, know anything about my tribe. Uh, I did not know, we, I did know a few little words. I, I know I'm skipping around everything, but my dad taught us, would teach us different foods uh, in the Ponca language. And uh, they, they stuck with me, you know. I mean, um, Anyways, we, we learned that, and then, bef but the whole time I was raised with uh, my uh, non-Indian, my uh, maternal family, and uh, was very large. So when it came time, uh, back then you obeyed your parents. I mean, you didn't say, oh, I mean, you didn't. So one day, um, well, my mom and dad did get a divorce, and my mom remarried, and, uh, Shortly after that, I think they remarried like in March of my, uh, after my freshman year. So that summer before my sophomore year, she said, you and your sister are going to go to Shilako. Oh, what's that? Well, that's an Indian school. I was, and I didn't say, no, I don't, you know, I, you just didn't do that. And uh, I said, okay, but, down deep, I was just terrified because why? I did not know how to speak Indian. You know, not tribal, not this tribe, that, but it was, I didn't know how to speak Indian. So that was my fear. Okay, uh, finally the, the fall comes. I mean, the first, after Labor Day, September, they take my sister and me uh, to Shilako. And, uh, I have no idea why. They, these are just memories that are just really in there. And uh, so you being, drove in, in a car with your mom right, and your right, stepdad. Right. They brought us up here. Shilako. And why I don't know. We got here at night after bed check, which was bed lights out at nine o'clock. Okay. They took me to home four, uh, where the sophomore girls live. And all this time, remember, I'm. Uh, anxious. Fearful, yeah, anxious about not knowing how to speak Indian. So uh, she takes, uh, her name was Miss Robinson, and uh, she takes me down to a, it's like a dorm room. There's like uh, two, four, six, there were like six or eight girls in there. Okay, uh, we go down there, the lights are out. She's using a flashlight to show me my bed. Because you're separated from your sister at this point. Oh, yeah. Your sister's gone she, to Yeah, she went to a freshman dorm. Freshman dorm. And so uh, there I was with, I mean, in the dark. And, the, oh. and um, so the next morning, I was awakened by, just, you know, just, to me, that's what it sounded like. Just really, really fast, jittery, stuttery talk. I mean, I, I just didn't know what they were saying. I thought, I knew it. I knew it. 
They are talking Indian, and I don't know what they're saying. I was <laughs> So that was my first night at, uh, in Home 4, uh, starting my sophomore year. And uh, back to the waking up. waking up. Then later on, we go to breakfast, I find out these girls were New Yorkers. <laughs> And you know, they talk very fast. They say, oh no, brown call. I mean, you know, and fast. And so they I, have an accent. Yes, and they talk fast. Yes. And they were all talking English. Yes. <laughs> Not Hody <Marty> Shonye. <laughs> so I, you know, that, that was my first night, my first time being at Shalako. And uh, where we go from there. So how, is, did uh, you, how did you adjust? What I did is uh, I kind of turned on the tough side. I mean, uh, I guess uh, I used uh, being in the band and I, my sister and I could also sing. And we, I don't know if you call that tough side or not, but I showed everybody what I can do. You know, I mean. You had these talents. Right. and. Uh, dance, you know, and, uh, because they had the dances on Saturday night, oh, and yeah. you were a good dancer. Uh-huh, oh, jitterbug. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, and that Did was, you make uh, friends? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of, uh, oh, yeah, I, I made, lot, made lots of friends, you know, it was, it was good. And uh, after, of course, my sophomore year, then came my junior year, moved to another dorm and uh, that housed juniors and seniors. Who, and, your, uh, who were your roommates in, uh, after, home, you, after you moved? Home to Bible, let's see. I don't or remember. What, tri <laughs> what tribes do you uh, Probably, uh, Oh, I do remember one of them, Mary Grimmett. She was Cherokee. I do remember her. Uh -huh. And uh, that's pretty well mm -hmm. it. So you were recruited for the band. How, how, when did you practice? What uh, hours? Early morning. Early morning. Uh, breakfast back then was we, uh, we got up at 5.30. Uh, went to breakfast at 6.30, uh, came back from breakfast, cleaned our rooms and did our mm -hmm. uh, detail, housing detail, shine the floors, whatever. And uh, um, what was your least favorite detail? Cleaning the bathrooms. <laughs> 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 yeah, we, yeah, we uh, did some crazy things. Some I shouldn't mention. Well, <laughs> if there's a story you could share about what you did for entertainment, that's um, great. Entertainment. Or even, you know, a memory of a, a good moment or a moment where you got into mischief, that's fine too. Uh, mischief? Okay, one of the things, I uh, ran around with uh, mostly senior girls and uh, they uh, taught me how to go night hawking. That means sneaking out of the dorm. And uh, actually, uh, uh, our means of night hawking is uh, we would, you know, wait till after lights out, wait a little bit, and then uh, we had a, a employee's son that would park behind Home Five, and and we would go out there get in and just ease out off of the campus. <laughs> and uh, I remember once we went to Ponca Lake, Ponca City Lake. I mean, you know, there was no, uh, we didn't do anything dishonest or anything. We just got out and went to, you know, went to the lake, all just friends. And it was just the idea of us being able to do that, the excitement. So, we come back in 
and uh, it was almost lights, t you know, time for them to get up. And so what we did is we just made up this thing. We, we went to an empty, actually a, a dorm room that no one stayed in. We hurriedly went to our rooms and we got some stuff from our rooms and we, uh, like a radio, and we took it to that empty dorm. There was about four of us girls, four or five, and uh, we went in there and then lights were, uh, came on and then here came uh, the head lady. I won't say who that was back then, but anyway, she came around and somehow it was a big deal because there were like five girls missing, you know. And so then uh, they actually came and opened that dorm room, you know. And there we all were, we said, okay, act like you're So we all acted like we was asleep. And uh, uh, she, she kind of yelled at us, you girls, what are you? <laughs> and so then we said, oh, oh, okay. Well, we just had a slumber party. And <laughs> I guess that so was- So you weren't in as bad a trouble as you would have been. <laughs> no, we weren't rude because I thought, thought we stayed in the- <laughs> Well, tell me about meeting your husband. Okay. Uh, I was a very good friend of uh, Maureen McCarty, his sister. She was in my grade also. She was in the band, and he was in the band, but he was a, a grade under me. And, and then, back then, my sophomore and junior year, he was just a, a pest. I mean, you know, just an honorary, honorary little pest. He liked to tease you? Uh, yeah, he did, you know, just, just ornery stuff like that. And uh, anyway, so then I remember then my senior year, that's when I broke up with a boy I had gone with, you know, a couple of years. But anyway, my senior year, uh, of course, being in the band, we always marched in the Arkalala parade. So we took the band bus up there, and, and for some crazy reason, we sat together, you know, he by the window and then me right next to him, just teasing around stuff. So we get there, and everybody leaves the bus and leaves out, you know, getting ready to march. And so uh, he said something, and then I leaned over and kissed him on the cheek. And he said, thank you. <laughs> Big deal. So anyway, we got out. I thought I'm just playing with him, you know. <laughs> so we got out, and actually, that's when we really started going together. And, he was uh, smitten. Huh? He was smitten. He, he, yeah, I guess. But she anyway. She was roommates with his sister. Also, roommates. With oh yeah, I was my oh. senior year. I was roommates with his sister. Uh huh. And let me introduce the daughter. Daughter's name. Pam. Pam. So this is Pam speaking. Yeah, saying that Thelma was roommates with the sister, and yes. I think you did mention that. Uh, but anyways, that, that, that kind of started, uh, that started it. And, So you both liked music. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. You had that in common. Yeah. Did we you both. go to many of the games at school, or were all you into the athletics? Okay. Yeah, we went to all of them. And we had a place uh, that was just, to me, it was just awesome. It was called uh, Flaming Arrow. F.A. is what we called it, and that's where you go after school and and uh, couldn't go for a while after supper and dance and, you know, and uh, case it out. <laughs> Back then, you didn't say kiss. It was casing it out. <laughs> oh, there's so much I could But there was a lot into. of strict supervision, too. There was, so uh-huh. How did you get around that? Well... <laughs> to be honest, if uh, I was punished at one time, mm -hmm. that means you couldn't go to the FA, you couldn't go out, you know, to any social function or anything. But uh, that that one evening, I decided I gotta go to the FA. So a home fire's right there. So I went out the back way, went right over here to the FA, and uh, then and you know they had matrons in there too that they knew who and. Uh, they knew who was good and who was bad. I mean, who was being, who was punished. being punished. Right. So um, that one day I thought I better leave out of here before, you know, everybody starts leaving out. And so I snuck out, I thought, 
So I started going toward home five, and uh, I remember this matron too, but she said, uh, McDonald, McDonald. And I didn't turn around, I just kept on, you know, on, kept on keeping on. And uh, then she, uh, they, they tried to blame me for being over to F.A. <laughs> and I said, that wasn't me, that was my sister. So I, <laughs> a lot of times, my sister and I favored, you know, quite a bit, shape and everything. But, and so, you could blame that's how I got out of it. That's how you got out of it. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but it, it was So, it was fun. The, there was a half a day for academics, half a day for vocational. Right. What did you, what kind of tracks did you study? What were you interested in? Uh, actually, what, uh, my trade was cosmetology. So, you know, you go to school, like you said, a half a day, then cosmetology. We also had a detail. And uh, so many times I got the laundry. That was really work. I mean, it really was. And uh, we, uh, laundry, we did all the sheets, this, everything for the dorms, all of them. We did the boys, some of the boys' clothes like uns. So what we would try to, and you know they had to have a number because they had to know their number to get their laundry back. So basically what we would try to do is find out our, you know, certain ones numbers. <laughs> it was fun. Oh, that's <laughs> But yeah, the, the detail was, it was, you, you know, you had to, make fun and mm -hmm. make things fun that you didn't really like. Right. And uh, uh, anyway, that was, <laughs> that was a laundry experience. And um, so did you get to, for your cosmetology, how about in terms of the hands-on training, did you have a, was that built into the program? Yes, and, and basically the things I remember most are the mistakes I made. Well, those are always interesting. Uh, I loved it, you know, uh, manicures and doing hair. And, I mean, I just really liked it. And uh, we had, we called them, uh, uh, well, wait, let me uh, think a minute. Okay, we had uh, younger girls, and uh, one day, it was before lunch, I remember this because like I said, the things I uh, remember most are the things that I did not, <laughs> that I did wrong. <laughs> so I was cutting her hair, uh, she had very, very thick Indian hair is what I call it. But anyway, it was really thick, so you gotta use thinning shears and <laughs> So uh, I was up here at her, at her crown, you know, and so I thought, well, it needs to be thinned. So I grabbed, I thought, the thinning shears, and it was those real scissors, and I cut a big chunk out of her hair. I didn't tell the instructor. I was just, that scared me, cause I did, and I thought, oh my goodness, she's gonna have a gang after me, you know, when she <laughs> finds out what I did. Oh. Yeah, it was uh, scary. What did happen? Well, she never did come around or anything, so I, you know. She just uh, didn't go back to you for another haircut. Yeah, I might have been called Thelma Scissorhands. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, basically it was, story. you know, it was, it was fun. <laughs> so you and your husband, um, oh, you meet at Chilaco and when you you graduate a year before him. Right, and so um, what what we did then is uh, he was from Phoenix, and uh, when school was out after my senior year, Hominy, which is what, about 2,500? I mean, very small place, so what are you gonna do? What was I gonna do? Mm -hmm. 
no opportunities really to use your cosmetology. Right, right. yeah. So uh, I just really missed Sim, and he was in Phoenix. Well, at that time he was in Dallas. So they allowed me, I still wonder why did they allow me to go, you know, to Dallas where Sim was. But now, I did. Was he, had he enlisted or? Oh no, he, okay. it was after his junior year and so, he just went to just spend went. Uh, time with his sister in Dallas. I see. She and her husband. So uh, I caught a bus, my stepdad took me to Perry. I caught a bus that took me to uh, Dallas. And from there uh, we went by car on to Phoenix where he was from. Mm -hmm. He had a older sister out there with you know, lots of kids and everything. We ended up getting married that summer after my senior year. And uh, so, to really tell you how it was back then, we had nothing except each other. And by today's standards, that would be unreal to get married. He had 50 cents when we got married, and he had his black bicycle that you know we'd ride around in phoenix and uh, we loved i mean we went out actually we got married out there in phoenix on a pima reservation mm -hmm. in a pima reservation church and uh, i guess i could may as well say that something funny happened there uh, his oldest sister she had five children back then but she brought uh, Compared, like I say, to, 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 to today, it's unreal. Okay, so she brought Kool-Aid and cookies to the desert. And after the wedding, as we went out, she had brought rice. So she and her little kids uh, started throwing rice, you know, and, and uh, all that. And the Pima ladies were just so, I mean, I don't know if they ever heard of that, but what, they were so excited, and so they just started picking rice up with sand and throwing it at, you know, because they were throwing rice too. And so it was, just, and they just laughed. I'll just always remember that, you know. That. But it was, uh, so we decided then, uh, like I said, 50 cents and a black bicycle. And none um, of your family was there. Oh, no, uh-uh. Just... And so, we, uh, Did, had we you decided... Had you told your folks that you were getting... What? Had you told your folks you were getting married? I told them mom? after I did. And so then we decided, well, okay, we've got to go back to Oklahoma. We came back to Hominy, and uh, his dad and older sister and her kid, children brought us back to Hominy from Phoenix. And so we just, uh, my stepdad said, well, you know, uh, Thelma can go ahead and stay here with us this year because you need to finish your education, Sim. So that's what we did. And uh, he could, came home on the weekends and he well, was at every, uh, once a, about once a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, hitchhiking. Pardon? Hitchhiking. Oh yeah, they they had to hitchhike. Uh, he and my brother would. Uh, Hitchhike home to Hominy, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's uh, the story of our beginning. And then eventually, did you end up working in cosmetology, or what did you end up working in? And what I never you... did uh, work cosmetology. Okay. Um, after he graduated, the baker, baking instructor here at Shalako, got him a job in Oklahoma City. So, uh, at a restaurant or something? It was in a bakery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a baker. At, uh, so, uh, that we went to Oklahoma City and we had our first child. And uh, we just, we just roughed it. I mean, that was just the norm. I mean, you didn't, you didn't ask for a, uh, I don't know, you just didn't ask for anything. You just made it on your own somehow. So that's what we did. And uh, then we eventually went to work at uh, uh, OSU, 
both okay. of us. Yeah, he baked there, oh, nice. and uh, I worked in the medical uh, office uh, on campus clinic is what it was. Yeah, and that's the first uh, experience. What I did was uh, the students would come in, fill out their little slip, and what was wrong, you know, their ailment. And that's the first time I ever heard of uh, the guys came in and they said, uh, drain ears. Well, what it was was wrestlers, you know, OSU's, OSU is known for their wrestlers, and they'd have big puffy ears. And so then, you know, doc, the doctor would, that's what they meant by draining Goodness. my ears. Yeah, I, I learned a lot there. <laughs> and. Uh, so that was OSU. From there, we moved to uh, Newkirk. Uh, well, Newkirk. Close by Shalako. Right. And uh, we, uh, in 1963, uh, the head cook here at Shalako wanted him, wanted my husband up here to work. So that's what we did. We eventually, we went to, he went to work up here in 1963, and we had uh, three children by then. And uh, he, he worked, you know, here in the kitchen. And uh, did you live on the campus or were you living at We Newkirk? still lived at Newkirk, okay. and then years, years later we did move on campus. Okay. And I worked as an instructional aide in the dorm. What was that like, coming back to It was like I knew all the things campus. to look for, you know. <laughs> and uh, I will tell you, though, that one of the scariest things that I ever heard of was uh, sniffing. And I found out that there are, that's the first. That was, that was starting to happen in the 60s. I guess it was, yeah. And the, uh, yeah, and uh, it was just the scariest thing. Of course, you know, I acted tough like, hey, I know all about it. But I, it was really horrible. Mm -hmm. And I found out, you know, you, you, you know things to watch for. Magic markers, mm -hmm. um, fingernail polish removers. Mm -hmm coarse paint mm -hmm. and you know they were some of them pitiful because they mm -hmm. you know you didn't have to smell it you could see it on their face mm -hmm. but anyway that was one of the the bad memories I guess you could say because mm -hmm. the student body had kind of changed at that point mm -hmm. so uh, that that was uh, it's where we uh, came to work here in 1963 he always stayed in the a bakery there and uh, he ended up being head cook mm -hmm. and I worked uh, went to work in the dorms like I said and uh, I also worked uh, I was a uh, what do they call that title title, title one or something a helper oh, yes. in math I also did that okay. mm -hmm. uh, one year and then I worked uh, the power plant as a secretary and uh, by 1980, when the school was uh, mm -hmm. getting ready to close, I worked in the main office, the secret, you know, the greeter, the mm -hmm. front desk, I guess you could call it. Mm -hmm. Pardon? The receptionist. Yeah, receptionist, uh huh. What are your memories of first hearing about rumors, I guess, at first? That, can you talk a little bit about? hearing that Shalaka was going to close, the close some of the things that were... Oh, it was devastating. I mean, absolutely devastating. By then, we lived on uh, campus, and uh, our middle son, Damon, mm -hmm. uh, was a student here okay. at Shalaka. Uh, he went his senior year here, and it was just... Was it rumors at first that you, how did you find out? I guess it was kind of rumors, then it got really serious. I remember after uh, when 1980, you know, after the new year and everything, because uh, it was serious. My husband, Sim, happened to uh, 
be lucky enough to get a job at Riverside Indian School, mm -hmm. and that's in Andarco. Mm -hmm. To me, that was like no man's land. It was way down there. I didn't know anybody. I well, I mean, you know, changing your it's children a in school. Of uh -huh. And uh, but basically, you know, we he he had to go down. There. He went to work in March, and then oh. the. the Children and I stayed uh, up here till the very last. That was one of the saddest. You, uh, our daughter. Well, and by then they had buried one of their sons oh, here yeah. at Newkirk, you know, here nearby. Oh. Yeah, during that time uh, in uh, 1974, we lost our first son. He's one year younger than Pam. Mm. Just a. Uh, Total, total shock, mm -hmm. car accident, mm -hmm. and uh, that was uh, 44 years ago, May the 19th, mm -hmm. but you never, ever get over it, mm -hmm. and uh, anyway, yeah, that was sad, very sad, very, of course, and, uh, but uh, we made it, made it through. Uh, Any other? Well, um, why is it important for you to come to these reunions? I just look at it as a blessing to be here another year to see uh, our classmates that are still with us and still come. And uh, all the children, the kids, the students from 1963 until the school closed in 1980, and uh, you know they graduated. They they are our little darlings. That's what we call them, <laughs> our little darlings. And uh, yeah, that was. Uh, and our son Damon was uh, president of the last graduating class. You know, and uh, I had a an uncle. His name was Lewis McDonald. He was in the first graduating class oh my of Shalako, and then, you know, the long span, and then, so uh, it was. I can say it was the saddest. Oh, the saddest day is when we took off for Anadarko. Our daughter, you drove with us, didn't you? Helped us mm -hmm. move and. It, it was very, very, Same very sad. to the school, yes. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, you know, he went ahead and worked there. Of course, we made friends down there, and and uh, he retired after 30 years. And uh, I never did go to work down there at Riverside. Just uh, mm -hmm. So, as of today, yeah. But we, you both came back to Newkirk eventually, uh, we or both, Ponca City? Uh, Actually, we, uh, in 2002, we stayed at Anadarko from 1980 okay. till uh, 2002, but uh, we had a chance to get one of uh, my aunt's houses there in uh, Hominy, so oh, back okay. where we started. Oh, um, so back you went back to Hominy. I'm, oh, I'm still, we're still in Hominy. We're still in Hominy. <laughs> Uh huh, and we uh, are blessed with grandchildren, great grandchildren. Yeah, they're just awesome. <laughs> so yeah, every year we just, uh, you know, it's really like something to look forward to. I mean, this is home. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I love it. Well, thank you very much for sharing with us today. Oh, you're so <laughs> welcome. I enjoyed it. I did too.